taken a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now this is the Overland trim level, so we've got this beautiful digital cluster screen and a lot of other features, but I'm going to talk you through everything that you need to know. Starting off, the steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be a power telescoping. So it might be manual, might be power, but power is just by your left knee. So you can go in, out, up and down in order to create that perfect position for you. Once you have that position set up, you'd also have the flexibility of being able to use the memory buttons there as well. So you could push the save button one and then either two after that in order for it to remember your, uh, your steering wheel setup. There is also the option for a heated steering wheel and you can turn that heated steering wheel on through the multimedia screen here. So all you're gonna do along the very top, you can push, actually you're gonna be able to see that. Ah, there you go. So you can see little heated steering wheel button right there to toggle it on or off. But back to the steering wheel itself. So you've got a series of different buttons that are available there, here, and then even in behind the steering wheel. The ones in behind the wheel are pretty neat. So you've got on the left-hand side, the flexibility of being able to seek. So you can push up and down there in order to be able to seek between different stations. You can push the button in the middle if you wanted to be able to change between all of your presets. So you can see that we're jumping between presets, AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. Along the right side, you can go up and down in order to increase or decrease volume. And then you can also push the button in the middle there in order to be able to jump between different sources. So again, AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. It just depends on which sources you currently have enabled through the infotainment system. But if you want a full walkthrough of the infotainment, you'll find it down in the description of this video. So you've got a series of buttons along the left hand side and that's going to let you navigate between the cluster screen there. So you can go left, right, up and down, etc. You've got this button in the middle to jump between this little icon view or back to a traditional cluster view instead. And then you can either answer or hang up on a phone call, but then you can also do a press if you wanted to be able to activate your assistant Cancel. instead. So voice assistant to be able to change songs, radio stations, navigate using your voice, all that fun stuff. And then if you were hooked up through Android or iPhone devices, you could do a longer press and hold in, either to act, in order to activate your Google or Siri assistant. Along the right hand side, series of other buttons. So you've got your adaptive cruise control setup. So you've got your adaptive cruise control setting ready, and then you can either increase or decrease there. So you can see how close or far do you want to be away from the vehicle that's in front of you. So you can see it adjusting there as well. You can then either cancel or resume or set plus or minus. So as you're traveling on the highway, you want to set your speed. All you're going to do is turn it on set and then go up or down one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. You could hit the brake if you wanted to stop it. You could hit cancel as well. And then you can also hit resume. So if you wanted to resume your previously set speed, you'd have that flexibility. There's also the lane drive assist. So what that's gonna do is just keep you nice and balanced inside of your lane as you go. I personally am a big fan of that one, especially if you're going on longer distance trips because you can kind of give your hands a little bit of a break, but that's a matter of personal preference. But if you want a fuller walkthrough on how the adaptive cruise system works, you'll find that walkthrough video down in the description. This thing also does have paddle shifters. So you've got your minus on the left-hand side, plus on the right-hand side. So very simple to use. If you wanted to be able to get a little bit more speed to pass somebody on the highway, you can drop as you're hitting the gas if you want to, and then you can also brake and then hit the minus to slow down a little bit quicker. If you wanted to rely more on engine braking, you can drop that way too. And then if you wanted to increase, you've also got the flexibility, but if you want a fuller walkthrough explanation and a live driving demo of paddle shifters, you'll find that walkthrough down in the description. Stick on the left hand side is for your blinkers, high beams, etc. So you can see there the high beams aren't locking out. And that's because just down by my left knee there, you've got to change the switch out. So you're changing the switch out to anything but auto mode. And then that would give you the flexibility of permanently locking on your high beams if you want to. Big benefit. So if you're in the auto mode, what's going to happen is if the vehicle recognizes it needs high beams, it's automatically going to flip them on for you. If it recognizes there's a car oncoming, it's going to dim them or turn them off and then bring them right back on again. So if you want them permanently locked out, you just have to adjust the lights to something other than auto. Straightforward. Along the right hand side, you've got the flexibility of adjusting your front wipers. You can rotate there in order to adjust your rear wipers or your wiper speed. And then if you wanted to adjust your rear wiper, it's right in the middle there. So this is wiper speed on off different speeds, etc. You're going to pull in towards you for that front wiper fluid and you're going to push away for the rear. Really straightforward. 
and then moving through the cluster screen. There is a lot of information here. So all I'm going to be doing as I move through the cluster is just using the directional pad here in order to do it. So starting off, you've got your main view. So you can also press and hold OK for this interesting view. I, it's really neat. And press and hold OK to switch back to that traditional cluster view instead. So matter of preference, but having the tachometer and the speedometer there, pretty neat, unless you wanted something just different. I don't know, it's kind of neat. I kind of like it. But basics of the actual screen itself when you're on this one. So you've got your tachometer, your speedometer, what, current, what page you're currently in, because you can go up and down between different pages, what gear you're currently in. You've obviously got your speed there. You've got your other pages along the side. Bottom left-hand side is going to be for your engine temperature. Bottom right-hand side is going to be for your current, uh, current fuel level. And then you've also got your current total traveled kilometers along the very bottom there as well. But let's move through all of these different options, including this is night vision mode. It is so neat. It's obviously it's super bright outside right now, but if you're traveling later on at night, having the night vision mode, if you're going through country roads, really beneficial because there's the option for animal detection, pedestrian detection, and things like that too. Your main, uh, lane management system. So that's the one we can toggle on or off. So whether or not you have that one on is a matter of preference. It's a nice safety setting, but it's going to be your choice whether it's on or off there. Moving down to vehicle information, there's not a ton of stuff here, but you've got, so your average ranges, which if you wanted to reset, you're just going to press and hold OK in order to reset that economy. Gauge status, so if you wanted to see all of your different gauges there. If you're changing oil yourself, you could essentially change your oil and then you're just pressing and holding OK for that counter to reset to zero. You can see what's going on with your tire pressure, currently measured in bar, but you've got the flexibility of changing out, which I will show you in just a minute. Trip information, so you've got two individual counters, so A and B. And same idea, if you wanted to reset your counters, you're just going to press and hold OK in order for that to be able to reset. Down to navigation, map is loading, but one nice thing about this is that actually going to show. Okay, so I do have a route going, and it looks like it's just taking its sweet time to load. So traditionally, mapping cluster would actually show up there. It's just that for whatever reason, it's just taking its sweet time. So we will come back to mapping cluster. You will arrive at your destination at 11.55 a.m. Why, thank you. And from here, you've got off-road with a series of different options. So you can see here that there are five individual bars, and that's because I've got the current ride height set to five. So it's the highest it's going to be able to sit. You can then lower that one, which again is going to lower the vehicle. And as after it lowers, it's going to show you what level you're on. So it's just going to take a second to lower. I think I lowered it by two levels there. So it's just really neat because it raises and lowers the vehicle beautifully. So really useful if you're going off-roading or if you want to lower the height to give yourself better dynamic handling instead. Ride height achieved. And then you can see there we're currently in the auto mode. So you've got a series of different modes that are available. So auto full-time, slippery, snowy conditions, and things like that. And that's all adjusted through the center stack. But there are benefits to each mode because it's going to play with your traction control, stability control, and a few other things. It's going to do things like disable the stability control if you're in certain ones. It's going to adjust your ride height if you're in other ones. So I was in rock mode for a second there. It brought me back up to one of the higher options for the ride height. But it's kind of neat because you've got so many different options that you have available, or you can just leave it in auto mode for the vehicle to adapt automatically just based off of what's currently going on with the vehicle. Terrain status, so you can see what's going on with your steering angle. See which wheel, and this one here would be which wheel is getting which amount of power. Pitch and roll, so you can see here the vehicle is tilted down a little, or up a little bit, I should say. So you'd have the flexibility of seeing if your vehicle is tilted up or down or left or right. So your pitch versus roll. Really useful if you're going off-road and you're navigating a little bit more rugged terrain. Terrain status and dynamics. From there, you've also got audio. So audio, you can... Oh, attempting to collect, uh, connect to Alexa. Let's switch out to something different. There we go, FM. And then you can jump between different presets that way as well if you want to. So remember, we can use the buttons in behind the steering wheel along the left side if you wanted to be able to seek. And then you've also got the flexibility of pressing the button in the middle to jump between your different presets there. So button on the right hand side. No stored messages for the vehicle. And then you can also enter a setup mode where you can do a few different things. So I'm just going to press OK. And that's going to give us the flexibility of customizing this a little bit. So you can customize your upper left hand side 
Do you want it to show compass, outside temperature, the current time, etc.? And it's the same idea. You can adjust your upper right current gear on or off. So do you want the current gear showing, yay or nay? Odometer along the very bottom. Do you want to show or hide the odometer? I'm personally a big fan of having it shown, but just to kind of give you a heads up what it looks like when it's not there. Favorite menu, what do you want showing up in your favorites? I think pretty much everything, yeah, pretty much everything is selected anyways, it's good. You can bring everything back to the defaults there instead. So you can customize the screen layout like a tiny little bit. And then you've also got head up display, which actually let's pop up. Will you be able to see that right now? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. There we go. Oh, there you go. You can see that. So you've got head up display with a little bit of information in there. So you can see what's currently going on with your vehicle speed, along with the direction that you're currently taking. So if you're going left, so I've got navigation going right now, which is why you can see what's going on with navigation yeah, right up there. So it's turn by turn direction right on your head up display and it shows up a little, it shows off a little bit more information too. So you can adjust what's going on with the information there. Do you want to have a simple one? Do you want to have it set up? So you've got more advanced options available. Do you want to adjust the height, the height? So if you want to bring it up versus down, make it a little bit easier for you to see, just depending on how tall or short you are. You can also adjust the brightness. I always recommend just keeping on the max available brightness though. And then you can also turn the display off completely if you're not a fan. So there are quite a few different things that you can do inside of that head up display, but adjusting it is all done right through the center stack there, or right through the dash screen, I should say. So you can see there, ton of different options that are available. The head up display is not standard, but for the Grand Cherokees that do have it, I, I personally enjoy it. It's a really nice feature. And then back just to your basic settings again. And then if you push the little button there in order to switch out to this little icon view, it's kind of neat because it's like a little sub view that gives you a series of other options. So it just displays things a little bit different while still giving you your digital speed. So if you wanted a little bit of a different look and layout, you'd have that flexibility. So you can see what's currently going on. Navigation map's gonna load, maybe. Ah, map's still taking its sweet time. But typically that would be full map and cluster available there. Just for whatever reason, it's not wanting to cooperate. It happens with technology sometimes. And then from there, jumping up in between all of your different gauges, whether or not you've got different safety gauges set up, if you've got your audio playing, what station are you currently on? So as you can see there, going between, different stations. So you're seeking by going up and down off to this side. You can see current vehicle height. If you're rotated, it's kind of neat pitch and roll status. So you've got a little bit of a unique setup available there, but I know that's quite a lot of info, but still basics at the same time. But that's what you need to know about the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Grand Cherokee.